would you stand with us this morning all across this place? Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord this morning? The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Psalm 111 declares these words. The psalmist says, praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart and in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. We're here today gathered with the assembly of the upright and we're in the congregation of the Lord. And so we're gonna lift him up today. We're gonna praise his name. We're gonna give everything we've got today. We're gonna praise him with our whole heart today. I wonder if you'd lift your hands with me right now and set your affections on things above today. Let's give him some praise.
voices and tell him that he's worthy. You're worthy of the praise, God. You're worthy of my adoration. You're worthy of every song. You're worthy of every bit of praise that I could ever offer, Lord. I give myself as a living sacrifice, God. You're worthy of it all, Jesus. Hallelujah. about the goodness of Jesus? Can we think about how holy He is? How worthy He is? How mighty He is? Thank you, Jesus. Holy, that's who you are.
Would you tell him he's worthy today? Would you tell him he's worthy today? Oh, come on, we can do better than that. He's worthy of all praise and all glory and all honor. Hallelujah. Jesus told his disciples in the book of Matthew chapter 8, he said, all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. Paul would come along a little later and he would write to the church at Philippi and to the church at large and say, not only does that extend to power in heaven and in earth, but it's in heaven, it's in earth, and it's power over things under the earth. And what that tells me and you today is that there is no realm that Jesus Christ does not have power over. There's nothing you can go through that God has not already been there and not already gotten the victory. There's nothing we can experience that our God has not already won the battle. And so today, with that in mind, we're going to pray a prayer of faith. Because there are some people here today that you're in a situation and you might think that God has lost his power. And you might believe, the enemy would want you to believe that God cannot deliver you and God cannot save you and God cannot set you free. But I've come to remind you today, we serve an all-powerful God. He is above all. He is through all. And he is in us all today. And so here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to grab the hand of somebody standing near you where it's appropriate. And we're going to agree in faith right now. Come on, everybody in this room is going through something. And I want you to know that the God of all heaven and earth is on your side. Come on, can we agree together knowing that he's able, Heavenly Father? God, I pray for my brother and my sister right now. God, they're going through something that I don't know about. They're fighting a battle that I don't know about. And God, we're calling upon you right now because you're the worthy God. You are the king that is high and lifted up. Oh God, we know that you have power in heaven and in earth and things under the earth. God, you have already fought the battle. And God, we know that there's nothing we can go through that you cannot help us to overcome. And so right now I pray, God, for every infirmity. I pray against every evil thing that would come against us. God, right now I call, Lord, to order, God, all of the things of heaven and earth under your name. Oh God, I pray that you would deliver right now. God, I pray that you would set the captive free. Oh God, come to the aid of those that are in need today. God, mend every broken heart today. Oh, God, we trust in you. God, when we don't have the power, we know that you have the power. We put our faith in you. We know, God, that you are victorious. We have the victory in you, Jesus. Oh, come on, if you know you're victorious, why don't you give them a praise today? Why don't you tell him he's worthy today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you today. God bless you. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. We want to take a moment this morning and welcome everyone to the Tree of Life Church. Look at your neighbor, smile at him, and say, I welcome you to the house of the Lord today. Can't nobody walk out of here saying nobody welcomed me at the house of the Lord. It happened right there. Somebody welcomed you. We're glad to have you. If you're a first-time guest, you need to know that you only come one time as a first-time guest here at the Tree of Life Church. After that, you're just part of the family, a part of the community. Would you give all of our guests a wonderful Tree of Life welcome today? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Today is a very special day here at the Tree of Life Church. We've kind of unofficially dubbed it Baby Sunday. Amen. We're excited to have a baby dedication that's going to be happening a little bit later on in the service. But as, as you leave the service today and out in the lobby, there is a table set up. Today kicks off our annual Change for Life baby bottle campaign. 
Amen. Many of you know what I'm holding up here. This is a baby bottle. We do this every year. It's a campaign that raises money and helps support our friends over at Life Forward Ministries. And uh, what we're asking you to do today is as you leave the sanctuary, uh, go stop at the table out in the lobby, pick up uh, one or two of these baby bottles and uh, take them home, fill them with change, uh, your spare change. When you go through the drive through don't round up for them. Take that spare change and put it in the, you know what I'm talking about. They're, they just, they're just trying to get more money out of it. That ain't no, that ain't no special fund. That, I'm telling you right now. No, take that change and put it in the baby bottle and help us to support some mothers and families that not only need the support financially, but they need Jesus. Amen. And this is a way that we can help them to find out who he is. Amen. Bring those bottles back by the last Sunday in May, and we're going to do this over the next five or six weeks, so we hope that you'll participate and be a part of that. Are you ready to give unto Him today? <laughs> Ushers, would you come? Giving is a form of worship. It's what the Bible tells us, and there are many ways to give here at the Tree of Life Church. They've got some of those on the screen behind me. Amen. You can give traditionally, you can give electronically, but however you give, be sure that you give with a cheerful spirit, a cheerful heart, the Bible says, because God loves a cheerful giver. Would you bow your head with me right now? Let's ask the blessing upon this offering. Father, we love you and we thank you today for who you are. We thank you for the spirit that we feel in this house this morning. God, I pray a special blessing over every gift and every giver. God, let us give with gladness today. Multiply the gift. God, let it go to the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Lord, let souls be saved because of what was given and sacrificed today. We won't fail to give you glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. God bless you as you give unto the Lord. All of your problems, all of your pain, all of your trouble, you can give it to Jesus. All of your burdens, all of your cares, even your struggles, you can give it to Jesus. Because he won't fail, he won't fail.
tell you he won't fail because he's never failed me yet. He won't fail. He won't leave you. No, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave you. No, he won't fail. Every believer in the house testify to the goodness of God right now. Come on, lift, lift up your voice up to Him in praise. I want everybody that knows He'll never leave you, He'll never forsake you, just to give Him that praise. That praise, hallelujah, that He's worthy of. Come on and do it. Can you do it? Lord, I thank you and I give you praise today. Come on, with a clapping of the hands and a shout of praise unto God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him praise like you're a believer in the power of God. Somebody give him praise like you believe it with all of your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you look to your neighbor real quick and just tell him he won't fail. Hallelujah. Look at somebody else and say, I promise you, he won't fail. We have an assurance from the Lord and we thank him for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time, God is good. Amen. We're so thankful that you are here today and you have come on a very special day. This is Baby Dedication Sunday. And we had... Uh, six families that were uh, in line uh, to be dedicated, but there were circumstances that precluded several, and we're down to one family that's going to have their baby dedicated today. So it's a special day for this wonderful family, and we're going to ask uh, Sarah Ellis to come and to bring Jeremiah and Penelope forward, and we're going to have a time of dedication here today, and we're thankful for this moment we're thankful for this day and it's going to be a good time in the presence of the Lord and we commend this family for recognizing the beauty and the importance of bringing their precious babies before the Lord and we're going to pray over them but before we do I want to invite your attention to the book of Deuteronomy because this is what the word of the Lord says concerning what we're doing here today. We're going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and we're going to read from Numbers chapter 6. But Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine house, thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And this is our prayer for Jeremiah and Penelope today. And I want us as a body, we're going to extend our hands and we're going to pray a prayer of dedication over these precious children. And we're going to pray for this family that the hand of God would be upon them and that the Spirit of the Lord would lead them and guide them. They have come to this place today as a holy and hallowed moment to dedicate their children unto the Lord. And we know that it extends well beyond this day, but this moment is an important moment. And we commit as the body of Christ to be there for these children. They need us to be believers. They need us to be prayer warriors. 
They need us to be safe havens, people that they can trust and know that when they have a need, we're going to be there to be a support in the time of need. And we're going to be there with godly counsel and faithfulness unto God. Could you just extend your hands with me as we pray a prayer of dedication over Penelope and Jeremiah today. Lord, I thank you for this family and I thank you for these children. And I pray the blessing of the Lord upon Jeremiah and Penelope. Lord, they are your children. For you knew them before you formed them. Before they were in their mother's womb, Lord, you have a plan and a purpose. You have ordained them to your glory. Today we dedicate them unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you, Lord, to watch over them. Let the Spirit of the Lord be a guide unto them. Let the Word of the Lord be a lamp to their feet and the light to their path. Lord, I pray for their parents right now in the name of Jesus Christ that the wisdom of God would be manifest right now, that a divine hedge of protection would be about this family. Lord, I pray for the love of God and the blood of Jesus, the spirit of the Lord to be upon this family. Lead them and guide them, oh God, into the beautiful truths and principles of your word and let it be an absolute lighthouse for their life all the days of their life and for this we give you praise and glory in Jesus mighty name we pray and the church said amen and amen let's clap our hands unto the Lord we have we have a Bible and a certificate for Jeremiah and we have a Bible and a certificate for Penelope and he said it's a birthday that's right it's a little birthday gift God bless you it's so good to see you God bless congratulations bless you let's give him another big hand amen we rejoice we rejoice over every family that the Lord has brought to Tree of Life Church and we rejoice over every person that the Lord is reaching. And I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, these, these children grow up fast. And, and a lot can happen between now and when they become of age. And we've got to pray over them in Jesus' name. Not just today, but, but every day. We've got to be prayerful people. Amen. And we thank the Lord for the people of God. How many are thankful for the church? I'm thankful for the church. Thank you for being the church. Amen. You may not even realize how significant your very presence is to the people of God and to the people around you. But people look to you and when they see you with uplifted hands, you're an inspiration to the person down the road. You may not know it or think of it. The devil sure doesn't want you to know it. But I'll tell you today that your being here is a blessing to everyone around you. Amen. Thank God for your faithfulness. And we thank God for the faithful giving of the Tree of Life Church. Amen. We're thankful. Uh, we, we made an announcement last week, but we want to reiterate it. You have committed by the grace of God to give over the course of this year $1,100,000. And we give God praise for that. We thank the Lord. We're going to get a lot accomplished in the kingdom of God because of the faithful giving of his people. And you've already given $212,000 of that. Could we give God praise for that? That is a miracle and a blessing from the Lord. And we thank God for it. We want to remain in prayer for the Barnhart family. This is the Barnhart family, very special to us. And uh, our prayers are with them. And as we grieve the passing of our beloved brother Mike Barnhart. We had a beautiful homegoing service for him yesterday and our prayers are with the Whaley family. We'll be preparing for that service tomorrow and uh, we thank God that we have a hope in glory. We have a hope in glory. Amen. We praise the Lord for it and I'm glad to see brother Dave Duvall here today. God bless you brother Dave Duvall. Amen. So good to be with Brother Dave Duvall in the house of the Lord this morning. God has kept his hand upon him, and we rejoice in that. And our prayers are with the Nwankwo family today. Dr. Nwankwo has lost her brother in Nigeria, and this is, a, this is a very tragic situation. They're going to be traveling there, and we want to uplift this family in prayer. And 
And uh, this, this passing has been a tragic situation and the, the whole nation actually is, is in need of prayer. And we, we want to keep them before the Lord in prayer. So be sure to show them love and prayers. God has been so good to his people that he brings us into the company of this precious faith and we're able to support one another in our times of need. Praise God. I'm, I'm inviting your attention this morning to the book of Psalms and I want to read to you from the 18th Psalm. From the 18th Psalm. And uh, I want to read just a couple of verses of scripture. Uh, and we're so saddened for the circumstances that brought Brother Justin Barnhart here, but we love Brother Justin and we're glad he's here today. Amen. This is a wonderful young man. Amen. Uh, uh, homegrown here at Tree of Life Church, and we sure love Brother Justin. Amen. Psalm 18, verses 2 and 3. The word of the Lord says this, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And I want to speak for just a few moments, and I'll probably do more praising than preaching. But I just want to take a few moments this morning and just preach to you this subject. In God we trust. In God we trust. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you and thank you, God. Could you pray with me over the word of the Lord this morning? God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it is powerful and precious. I thank you that you bring it to us in just the moment that we need it. And I thank you today that you have brought us to this place where we can feel your power and your presence. And I pray, God, that your word will be so refreshing, so uplifting, that it will help us and strengthen us for anything anybody may be facing today. Lord, we humble ourselves to the preaching of your word today. Speak to us, Lord, clearly. And help us, we ask, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray in the church, said in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. And amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Marcia, it's so good to see you today. A friend of Sister Buller, we are so thankful that you are here at Tree of Life Church today. Amen. Let's give Marcia a great big hand. God bless you. I just want to step to this podium today, and I want to remind you that you can trust the Lord. You can trust him and you, you must trust him. And he is trustworthy. That word trustworthy, that compound word takes two very great words and puts them together. Trust and worthy. He is a God that you and I can trust and he is worthy of that trust. Your trust and my trust. What a special thing that is. Where are you going to place such a special commodity? Where are you going to invest such a precious thing as trust? This belief structure that exists within you as a human being that causes you to believe, that causes you to rely upon and to count on this or that, where are you going to put such a thing? I know today that I'm preaching to people who have placed this precious commodity, this pure and beautiful thing called trust. You have placed it in many things through life, only to be disappointed, only to be very disheartened and discouraged by the outcome of that misplaced trust. But I want you to know that God is trustworthy. You can trust in the Lord today. Hallelujah. Our nation uses this, this statement, in God we trust. It is often on our currency and sometimes even in news publications. But I am concerned that it has become a comforting catchphrase and not a way of life. I'm concerned that, that our way that we legislate 
and the way that we act and the way that we live and the decisions we make do not communicate that it is in God that we trust. And the church has to be that lighthouse, that people, that community of faith that stands as a stalwart in a day and in a time where people have turned their backs on the Lord, we stand, hallelujah, emphasis on the word stand. We stand ready to say that we unashamedly trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. I I want to point out that the children of Israel, particularly the three Hebrew children, who we know as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were threatened to be cast into the fiery furnace because they would not bow to the image of King Nebuchadnezzar. And we refused to bow to anything that the world would try to set up as contrary to God. God alone receives our worship. And God alone receives our obeisance. These three Hebrew children stand, again, emphasis on the word stand, as a testimony that that you don't serve anybody but God. Regardless of the circumstances, it is in God that we trust. And they said, we will not bow. Nebuchadnezzar said, I will throw you into the fiery furnace. And they said to him, our God is able to deliver us from the fire. I want you to know that our God is able. He's able. He is able. I don't know what symptoms you have found yourself struggling with in recent times, but our God is able to heal you of any sickness that it may possibly be. Our God is able to deliver you out of any trouble that you may find yourself facing. He's able. They said, our God is able to deliver us. And then they, as realists, said, and yet he may choose to let us die for our faith. But they said, even if that is the case, we still will not bow to this image. When we say we trust God, ladies and gentlemen, we trust his ability and we trust his decisions. And if he chooses that we would die for his namesake, then so be it. I trust in the Lord. I trust his power. I trust his wisdom. I trust his ability. I trust his sovereignty. I trust in him. We do not place our trust in humanity. We place our trust in God. We do not fear what man can do unto us because we trust in God. We do not trust in the global economy. We do not trust in the American economy. We do not trust in people doing the right things. We do not trust in the American electorate. We do not trust in our political processes. We trust in God. We do not trust in Iran backing off. We don't trust in Israel being able to defend herself. We don't trust in anything but God. We do not trust in global superpowers. We're not, listen, we're not worried or concerned about what's happening in backroom dealings right now. Our trust is in God and it doesn't matter what anybody does anywhere. He's going to stand on the latter day and it will be all right. He's going to make all things well. You just trust in him. I feel a holy boldness right now. I feel like God wants to tell his people that he shall bear you up upon eagles' wings. You know, that's what the Bible said, that he bore them up upon eagles' wings. But the Bible also says he shall cover me with his wings. There are times when he bears us up and flies us away. And there are times when he covers us and protects us from all wind and rain. And either which way he chooses to do it, I trust in him. 
If his wings cover me or if they pick me up and take me for a ride, I trust in him. I put my trust in Jesus. I put my trust in Jesus. He is the savior of my soul. You'll just let me, if you'll let me, I need to praise him for a little while. I'll praise him to you if you don't mind. He is the savior of my soul. He is the healer of my body. He keeps my mind right. He watches over me when I need a wind of refreshing. He opens the windows of heaven and a holy gust and gale of wind come to my soul in my spirit I trust him with my children I trust him with my family I trust him with my wife I trust him with this congregation I trust him in this city I trust him with my physical health I trust him with my finances it is in God that we trust hallelujah hallelujah the Lord is my rock, the psalmist said. The Lord is my rock. I want you to know that is an emphasis on standing. When he says he's my rock, we say that, but we don't think about what it means. It means he is a sure foundation that you can put your feet upon his name and upon his word. And it doesn't matter what's going on underneath you. The Lord is my rock. When I stand upon him and my trust in him, hallelujah, I want you to know that nothing can shake me off of that foundation. Nothing can move me off of that foundation. Don't you know that's how Peter walked on the water? Peter walked on the, who in the world can walk on the water? But Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter said, if it be thou, Lord, bid me come. And Jesus said, come unto me. I'm going to tell you that when Peter walked on that water, he was standing on a rock. I said when he was walking on water, he was standing on the rock. I don't know what you're walking on today. I don't know what you're walking into tomorrow. I don't know what you feel all around you but the Lord is my rock he is a firm foundation I plant my feet on him when the winds may blow and when the rain may fall let the lightning flash and let the thunder roll but my feet are fixed I said my feet are fixed upon the rock Hallelujah. Come on, bring your family into the house of God. Get your children into Sunday school. Get their feet fixed upon the rock. Get them into a place of praise and prayer and worship. Let them know where their help comes from. The psalmist who said, the Lord is my rock, said, I know from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. God forbid, God forbid that you grow up in Tree of Life Church and not know where your help comes from. You better know where your help comes from. I want you to know that you can find him in prayer. You can find him in worship. We're not putting our hands together in the same way they do it at at Paycor Stadium this fall. We're putting our hands together because we know in whom we have believed and we are persuaded. The Lord is the rock of my life. The Lord is the rock of my home. The Lord is the rock of my marriage. The Lord is the rock of my children. You can trust in him. You can go to him in prayer. And listen, when you talk to him, you're talking to God and he is safe. You are safe when you're talking with God. You can express how you feel when you're talking with God. You can open up the word and say, but the word says. Ah." You hear what I'm telling you? I don't know what you're going through. 
I don't know what you're facing, but you can go to God in prayer, open up the scriptures and say, but the word says, I don't know why I'm going through this right now, Lord, because your word says, when you start talking to God like that, he will talk to you and he will change your life and your perspective. He will bear you up upon eagle's wings. And your feet will get a little more fixed into that rock. Hallelujah, Paul said, when you've done all to stand, stand. Woo, hallelujah. I will say that again. When you've done all to stand. He didn't say give up. When you've done all to stand and it didn't work, just give up. Obviously, you're not supposed to be standing right now. Just sit down, all the way down. That's not what he said. No, he said, when you've done all to stand, stand. Having your loins girt about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation. Take unto you the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Above all, take the shield of faith. Let your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And, 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 and he's, this is what he's saying. He's saying, stand on the rock. The Lord is my rock. And the Bible says the Lord is my fortress. Hallelujah. The Lord is my rock. He's what I stand upon. And nothing can shake me off of him, but he's also my fortress. He will be over me. He will be about me. He will put his hand of protection upon me. He will overshadow me with his wings. Under his feathers I shall trust. Underneath are the everlasting arms of God. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about me. This isn't the angel of the Lord just flying in here and there checking in. No, the angel of the Lord has taken up residence around me. The angel of the Lord encamps around about me. He, I am overshadowed. I am undergirded. He lives inside of me. He is my fortress. Sister Heidi and I were in Pensacola, Florida in 1998 during Hurricane George. And we had never been in a hurricane. And Pastor and Sister Welch were the pastors of the church there. This is, I was preaching there a couple of weeks ago in Pensacola, Florida uh, at the same church. And it, they're doing great, powerful revival center. And we're thankful for what the Lord is doing there. But we were there in 1998. We were newlyweds. And, and we were, the, the hurricane was coming. You could see the, the darkness of the clouds. And everybody was all abuzz about the hurricane coming. Well, I was raised in Indiana. I know all about tornadoes. You just get in the basement and eat some pizza and wait till it's over and then everything's all right. So they said, what are you, we're going to have to cancel some of the services because we're going to have to get ready for this hurricane that's coming in. And, and uh, we said, uh, I said, I, that's okay. Actually, I think we're going to be fine. They said, well, you're welcome to come to the church. It's a certified hurricane shelter. And we said, I don't think we'll need to do that. We'll just stay in the hotel because uh, you, we'll just ride it out. And they said, are you sure about that? Of course we're sure about that. Ain't afraid of no hurricane. <laughs> so we went out to eat that night and, and we walked in and there was a little drizzle coming down, a little rainfall. And I said, uh-oh, here it starts. Why don't we get a little bite to eat and uh, then we'll go mosey on back to the old hotel and just kind of wait this storm out. And uh, we walk into the restaurant and as we're sitting there eating and we're eating our appetizer and our entree and, and, and taking our time eating and, and all of a sudden... Um, started picking up a little bit out there as we looked out the window and the window started bowing in like, a, like about to burst open. And we're like, hmm, that's a little different. And the manager came out and said, all right, everybody, I need you to move to this side of the restaurant. We think the window's gonna go. And I said, well, now that is an unusual development. Ed. When we walked out, we'd only been in there for 45 minutes. When we walked out, the water in the parking lot was up over our ankles and the rain was coming up at us as if from the ground. It was, I've never, I actually have never been anything like it. It was circulating and the rain was coming up at us and we thought, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> we went back to the hotel. When we walked into the hotel, we thought, I guess we'll be okay here. They did say something about coming to the church, that it's a hurricane shelter. And, and my wife said, you know what? Let's get packed up. I've got a bad feeling. We packed everything up in the last bag that we zipped. When we zipped it, the lights went out and water started flooding into our room through the back of the sink and the whole floor was covered and rising. And we got out into that car, 
we drove to the church and when we got to the church, knocking on the door, we looked like two drowned rats coming to the door. <laughs> they opened the door, Brother Welch said, we were expecting you, come on in. And we stood inside that certified hurricane shelter and we watched the trees bow over and we watched them go this way and that way and we watched signs spiral off of, their, off of the billboard posts and, and we watched the ravages of the storm but we were in a safe place. And I want you to understand that's what the Bible means when it says the Lord is our fortress. We're living in a world where the winds and the waves and the rain and the wind windows are bursting and the water is rising and the rain is coming at you from directions you're not used to the rain coming at you but if you get in Jesus I said if you get in Jesus the Lord is my fortress hallelujah hear my cry oh God attend unto my prayer from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the right that is higher than I for thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy come on in come on in come on in to Jesus I want you to know that when you repent and are baptized in Jesus name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost that's you coming into Christ and Christ coming into you it's the fortress Hey, hey, the clouds are gathering in our world. Ballistic missiles are flying in our world. Don't just weather those elements. Get in the fortress. Get in the fortress. Hallelujah, because I want you to know whatever happens, it will be all right. It's going to be all right. He said, the Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer. I want you to know that God is a delivering God. This is God as rescuer. This is God reaching his hand into your fire and pulling you out. This is the fourth man in the fire. He's not just a rock and he's not just a fortress, but he is a deliverer with a strong hand and a stretched out arm. I'm glad he's got both of those things, a strong hand and a stretched out arm. He's got this strong hand that he can can grip you and pull you out of whatever mess you find yourself in right now. But he's got a, a stretched out arm. It wouldn't be much if he only had a stretched out arm but didn't have a strong hand. Just kind of get down there and then can't do much with it. But he's got a stretched out arm and a strong hand. And he can pull you out of that sickness. And he can pull you out of that struggle. And he can pull you out of that crisis. The Lord is my deliverer. I just wonder, just, just a quick, quick, quick quiz. Anybody remember when he pulled you out of addiction? Anybody? Anybody? Woo. Hey! If you're struggling with addiction today, I want you to look around you at those who can testify and say, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it in my own life. Woo. How many remember when you were sick and you couldn't get well and you just get, got sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker, but the Lord stepped in. The Lord came through. If I'd have asked some of you in 2014 or 2004, if you'd have made it to 2024, you'd have said, ain't no way I'm making it to 2024. I'd be good to get out of this month with my sanity in place. And look at you here today, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in your right mind. You know why? Because the Lord is my deliverer. I didn't come to sermonize today. I came to praise him. 
I said I came to lift him up above your problem, above your turmoil. Hallelujah. Sometimes we pray and ask God for help. And we're so relieved when the help comes, we forget to thank him for it. And because we forget to thank him for it, it never registers that it was done. We just move right along with the new life and with the new circumstances. And we're thankful if you stop and ask us, yeah, of course we're thankful. But we're like the nine lepers who went running off with their miracle in hand. But I wonder if there's just one leper that'll stop for a moment and say, but wait a minute. I remember when my body was breaking down. Wait a minute. I remember when my family was falling apart. Wait a minute. I remember when my mind was broken. Wait a minute. I remember when I had to have a fix and a fix and another fix. And look at me today. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm saved. Sanctified. Oh, that's why we've got to be a praising people. When people walk into a Pentecostal church, they need to walk into a Pentecostal church. They need to walk into a place where people are there who know where their help comes from. If he hadn't been so good, I wouldn't have to praise him like I praise him. But he's been better to me that I've been to myself. He's a good, good father. Glory. You weren't there when I couldn't see my way out. You weren't there when the sorrows of death come past me about. You weren't there when the sorrows of hell were like flames dancing around me. You weren't there when the enemy was whispering in my ear. You weren't there. But God is my deliverer. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. gonna wipe the tears from your eyes he's gonna be the lifter of your head he's gonna heal you oh I'm gonna say that again because I felt the confirmation in the Holy Ghost he's going to heal you Hallelujah. Our musicians can go ahead and come. I'm done. Thank you. Ooh, hallelujah. He said, the Lord is my God. That's it right there. If that's not the case, then none of this other is the case. If, if something else or somebody else is your God, then that's your God. Then you have to go to that for your healing. You have to go to that for your help. If, if something or somebody or some false teaching is your faith system, then that's who you pray to. But if he is your God, I, even I, am the Lord and beside me there is none else I am God there is none beside me there is no savior beside me I know not any 
if there's anything else exalting itself against the knowledge of God, God forbid you alone, oh Lord. You're who I pray to. You're who I bow to. When my flesh wants to do one thing, but your word tells me to do this, I'm going to do this because you are my God. That means you're my ruler. That means you are my ruler. If he doesn't rule you, he's not your God. If your flesh and your appetite rules you, your flesh is your God. If your money rules you, money is your God. If fear rules you, then pray to fear. But if you want God to rule you, he'll be your rock, he'll be your fortress, he'll be your deliverer. If you want him to be those things, then he needs to be your ruler. When my flesh desires sin, but his word calls and commands righteousness, I choose righteousness because he's my ruler. He's my ruler. He's my, the Lord is my God. He said, the Lord is my strength. I feel the Holy Ghost here today. God's getting ready to overturn some of the gods you've put in your life. He's getting ready to cast down fear that has been a God in your life. You, you didn't know it, but fear was ruling every decision you made and every emotion you had. You didn't know it, but money was standing over you, directing and leading and guiding you. You got to cast all that down and say, the Lord is my God. Yeah. He said, he is my strength. You know what that, that means? That means that, that, that all of a sudden out of nowhere, I feel strong. Where'd that strength come from? The Lord is my strength. Yeah, the Lord is my rock. He's my firm foundation. He's my fortress. He covers and protects. And he's my deliverer. He pulls me out of what I can't get out of myself. And he is my strength. I don't know how to explain this one, ladies and gentlemen. I just know it's kind of like when Samson, I don't know if Samson looked like Hercules or not. I don't know what Samson looked like, but I know that when the need came and when the enemy would come in like a flood, I don't know if people just cowered from him because he looked like he could take care of business or not. But what I do know is that when the need was present, the spirit of the Lord would come upon him and he would throw armies around like rag dolls. What was it? It was the Lord, his strength tell you something you're going through something right now you feel weak and fatigued and broken and hopeless and helpless but if you'll make the Lord your God oh, oh, strength 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 you'll bear burdens you didn't know you could bear you'll walk distances you didn't know you could walk you'll run through troops and leap over walls you didn't know you could run through or leap over Strength. Hallelujah. The Lord is the horn of my salvation. In him will I trust. He is my buckler. He is my high tower. I'm not going to get into all of it. I wish I could, but I'm, I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to do something right now. Nimrod tried in vain to build a high tower. You'll never build a tower high enough to escape the pressures and problems of this world. But the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. He is my high tower. How high? However high you need it to be. Because I'm going to tell you what, my problems and my circumstances, they're pretty high. He's higher than that. Yeah, but these global issues, nuclear war, that's pretty high. He's higher than that. But all this cancer and stage four, he's higher than that. Woo! Higher, 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 
higher, higher. He's higher. He's higher than cancer. He's higher than depression. He's higher than anxiety. He's higher than fear. Higher. Lift Jesus. Higher. Lift him higher. Come on, somebody from the back, run to the front and say he's higher. Believe it! Shout like you believe it!
break every chain in this building. If you let him, he's going to break every chain off of you right now. I want you to dive into it like you're diving into a nine foot swimming pool. Just head first. Throw your hands in the air. Put your feet on the ground. Shake under the power of God. Let the Holy Ghost get a hold of you today. There's going to be a wind of refreshing to come through this house. When we sing this song, I want you to begin doing what it says. No chain should be on the child of God. No chain should be on the child of God. You are free. You are free. You are free by the blood of Jesus. You are free by the blood of Jesus. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, a good dance. I'm going to dance it out and break. And break the music. All of my fear, I will turn into All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair. A victory dance. I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment.
of despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in vain. I will crush disappointment. 